So our breakfast scene is looking pretty good, but I want to start adding some motion to it. And being a cartoon fan like I am, I want to start bringing some of these items on the breakfast table to life. I'm going to start with my spoon. You may decide to use your milk carton or maybe even your coffee cup. Um, I would say for right now, don't animate the cereal box or the cereal bowl because we're going to use those for some other stuff later. Um, I think I'm going to use my spoon. So I've added all of these objects to a layer and I've locked that layer so I can't accidentally select stuff I don't want to select. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unlock that and select the spoon and add it to its own layer. And that way I can lock these other objects and my spoon is on its own layer. And I'll just name that spoon layer. Now, I will say it's important to make sure you're naming all of these objects. You'll see that I've gone through and I've given them all appropriate names. So if I glance over in my outliner, I know which of these objects are which models in the scene. So if I choose bowl, I know I'm going to be able to select the bowl. I know this part doesn't sound exciting, but naming all of these things will make your life a lot easier later. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my spoon, and we're going to go ahead and start adding some deformers to this. But before we do, we need to notice that there's still some information over here in my channel box that I don't necessarily need anymore. For example, I have this poly smooth face where I smoothed the object. Um, and I have some rotations and scales on here that are, are just going to make for a more difficult process if I tried to rig it now. So a very important step to the rigging process of anything is we want to delete the history and we want to freeze the transformations. Now, before you do that, notice that I tried to model everything as straight as I could in this scene. I didn't really model my cereal box like this. Um, I can place it like that later, but right now I'm trying to model everything pretty neat and then I can move it around a little bit to make it look more realistic and lived in later. So make sure your spoon isn't angled in like a weird angle before you freeze these transformations. Sort of make sure it lines up with the world as well. And usually if you've just imported your spoon and not edited it at all, then you're, you should be fine. So I'll go to modify freeze transformations and edit delete by type history. So now my spoon is pretty clean. Now, one more thing I want to do. If I'm going to animate my spoon bouncing around on the table, I need to go ahead and have it standing up. And the reason for that is even though I may start the animation with the spoon laying down, a lot of the animation is going to rely on the spoon being able to make contact with the table at the appropriate location. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. A trick you can use for this as well is if you hold down J while you're rotating, it will snap it to 15 degree increments. I'll also move this up and sort of line it up with the table touching there. I want to sort of look at my grid and see where this lines up with the origin. Um, it's not perfect, but I'm okay with that. Um, just recognize that we're going to have to align some stuff later. So I made some more numbers on this. So again, I will do modify freeze transformations. And this is now the new way I want my spoon to be oriented. I'm actually going to go ahead and hide some of these other elements just so we can focus on the spoon. So you'll notice this is our origin point. Probably one of the cleaner ways of modeling this is to get our object to our origin point. But just because I know that sometimes people don't work that way, I'm going to show you how to do this with our object over here instead. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some deformers to this. The two deformers I think I want to add are at least a squash and stretch and a bend deformer. So let's start with those. 
I'll go to my deform menu and I'll do nonlinear squash. Now with a squash deformer, I can adjust factor and you're going to see that I get the stretchiness on the spoon. But again, I want this stretchiness so I can make my spoon seem like it's jumping. And that means really I want it to squash from the ground, not from the center of the object like it is now. To do this, I need to move my squash handle down to the ground, or at least down to where the spoon will be thinking of the ground, so like the con where it's going to contact the table. Now, if I adjust my squash factor, you'll see it's stretching the lower half, uh, but it's also stretching some elements that are down here below the spoon that don't even exist. So I'll take my low bound up to zero, and now when I adjust my factor, that's looking a little better. However, the top part of my spoon is not being affected. So if I adjust my high bound higher, I'm gonna guess probably about two, maybe 2.1. Then when I adjust factor now, my spoon is going to squash and stretch. So I'll go ahead and set my factor back to zero just so we can see our spoon in its default undeformed version. So that gives us a squash and stretch control. I also want the object to be able to bend. So I can combine deformers. I'm going to go ahead and add a bend deformer on this as well. So I'm going to go to deform, nonlinear, bend. And you'll see with the curvature of this, there's my object bending. Now again, I really don't want the bottom half of this object bending. So I'm just going to take my low bound out of that to zero. And so now I get the object bending this way. Well, what if I wanted the object to bend forward? What if I wanted the spoon to bend forward? Well, if I add a little curvature to this, the way you can get this curvature to go in a different direction is to actually change the rotation of the bend handle. So if I select the bend handle and rotate it just in the Y axis, well now my spoon is bending forward. So I can set this to 90 and now my curvature bends forward and back. So something interesting about this is that means I could also change the height point at which this bends. If I wanted it to look more like the tip of the spoon was bending, I could change the bend handle height and move it up here just to the tip. And now I could use the same controller to make it look like the spoon was waving instead of bending. Or if I wanted it to look like the spoon was bending more at some perceived waist, um, I could take it way down here and add higher curvature. So this is something that I can control to get all sorts of different deformations. I'm gonna go ahead and set my curvature to zero and I'll go ahead and set the translate Y just a little higher as well, just to line it up a little better.